we're going to have a conversation around Charlie 3 and talk about oracles and the future of the project, what they're doing at the moment, get a really big update, as well as go through their catalyst proposals at the moment as well. And Damon is on the episode again to talk all about this. Damon, welcome back to the podcast. Oh, thanks uh, for having me, Pete. It's Yeah, it's been a while. I mean, there's lots going on in the ecosystem. So uh, thanks for bringing me back in. Now, it's always good to get an update on Cardano's premier Oracle solution so we can find out what's going on. Now, what has been happening in the C3 ecosystem? Uh, what have you guys been up to over the last uh, couple of months? Sure. Yeah. I mean, mainly it's been trying to build everything from the last Catalyst round. We won five proposals there uh, for various different things, and we're just really implementing a lot of that. We've got a full audit going on. We're upgrading our solution. Uh, the most current thing right now is getting everything ready for the next hard fork because uh, we have to re-update the nodes and the uh, you know with the newest node software for Cardano node stuff. And uh, just implementing a lot more security features for you know our data feeds and our Oracle, so everything's more uh, secure and trustable and all that stuff. So we're really excited on the progress that we've made, but it's a continuous grind, so we're still going at it. All right, I, I have to comment on the dashboard because you know I'm sure. I'm logging in constantly now to have a look at the price feeds. I'm looking at the proof of reserves for yeah. uh, USDM and all that. The, the dashboard is nice. You guys did a good job there. Thank you. Yeah, we just upgraded it. Actually, that's been another thing we've been really working on is we just upgraded it. It has more transparency than any other Oracle in blockchain. I mean, even Chainlink doesn't show all of the data sources that every feed is using or the nodes that are participating. And we have all of that information uh, for, for everything there. And we keep making tiny tweaks for UI, UX. Uh, we have a forum spot there now. That will change soon. I think we're going to use a third-party forum because... Why, why try and build our own when other things work? And yep. uh, we've got a DAO situation up for the new next price feeds to come in. So anybody that wants to go and vote on those, that would be great. It's our first DAO vote. So that would be awesome for people to uh, get in there. And that's also part of the catalyst from last round. It's launching more feeds for the community. So the five we have proposed are ones that uh, a few projects have asked for already. They just can't uh, afford it currently. So that's what the catalyst funding is for. Yeah, I, I did notice there's more feeds appearing over time. So it's really good to see that side of things growing for the ecosystem there on Charlie 3. So let's talk about what you guys are doing next. And uh, this, okay. this whole idea and concept around partner chains mm -hmm. is quite interesting. Is this all... Uh, Please explain it to me. Like I, I've got some, <laughs> I've got some idea of what it is, but I know I'm going to fudge it up. So please sure. tell me exactly what's, well, what's going on. I also on. don't build it, so we'll see how good I do. But the partner partner chain framework is from IOG, and it's kind of like an L2, but it's a more integrated uh, L2. So it's not completely separate. Things work a little bit more in tandem, but. You just think about it as, as a separate L2. We're using Cardano, Ledger, uh, more or less, um, but we have our own framework over there that we can set different parameters and transaction costs and everything else. So the partner chain framework is built with uh, a, a language called Substrate, and we should be able to implement uh, like ZK into it as well, zero knowledge proofs, whether that's with folds or ZK Mina, same idea, right? Just to make the validation uh, situation faster, cheaper, easier, more trusted, that kind of thing, more decentralized. So that is one of our big proposals, and that's coming off of the uh, back of the last uh, Catalyst round as well, where we won a bit for uh, doing the initial research, and this is being done with TX Pipe and with IO, uh, into what's the best way to actually take advantage of the partner chain uh, framework that they're building and implement it and be a not just a premier oracle on Cardano, but a premier oracle in blockchain in general. So having this partner chain infrastructure on the side with ZK implementation will allow us a lot easier onboarding of real world companies like TradFi and legacy type stuff. So that's really a big thing. Like we're really looking at uh, that kind of integration and adoption uh, more so than just what's already in our ecosystem. How can we grow it uh, and break down some of those uh, barriers to adoption basically. Uh, so it's a lot easier that way. It's a lot easier to go cross-chain because then, you know, we can 
uh, push out our, you know, like SDKs and stuff to, to be able to post this data onto other chains, which then comes back to Cardano for any projects that want to use it. Cause it's still processing on our ledger, which is partner chain, which is still technically tied in with Cardano and the volume there. Um, we can have, it's better for token holders because there's a lot more use case of the token dealing with transaction fees, just in Charlie three, instead of having to convert it to ADA, which is what we currently do. Um, and then we can also hold just like kind of what midnight, uh, is trying to do. We can do a more customization on the side to have stuff that is encrypted, you know, for these real world businesses that want to bring their stuff on. So like medical data or legal stuff or an identity things that people need to access, but don't want it to be public knowledge. Um, so cheaper, faster, more adaptable, more adoptable and, uh, better to better token uh, utility i guess so overall just a better boon but it is a lot to build yeah i can imagine it's uh, yeah. uh it's essentially a whole new chain and i'm assuming a whole yeah. new language as well uh so mm -hmm. there's definitely a lot of work there i, I like this um uh, notion of making it more adoptable uh, yeah. i know the cardano summit this year is all about adoption the, like you look at their tracks and stream it's all adoption, adoption, adoption. So this is uh, super interesting. Uh, how, w w why would uh, creating the Charlie Three SDKs on Substrate be better than creating them on Cardano? This is like a technical thing I'm trying to understand here. So yeah, well, uh, the Cardano infrastructure, like on-chain stuff that we have, is all built in Plutus TX. We're pretty old school with it, but it's mainly for security purposes. Um, also cost, like if we wanted to redo the whole thing in Icon to do the yeah. same thing we're already doing in Plutus, it's just like hard. Um, but doing it with Substrate just makes it a lot more easy. It's a more used language basically, and it can integrate with other chains infrastructure a lot easier than gotcha. Plutus okay. or Icon or something like that can. So that's our main issue as Cardano in general. It's a strength, but it's also our issue is that it's so different and so unique that it's really hard to integrate to other chains. So our off-chain stuff, all of our node network stuff is all, all built in Python and we did that on purpose. So it can be interchangeable and not has to, doesn't really have to do much uh, for the future uh, to change, to go onto different chains and stuff, which we've already proved when we built an Oracle on Radix and we were able to use the same node infrastructure more or less. Uh, it's really just the on-chain part. So when we can get SDKs or some, I say an SDK, it's more like a bridge situation where say, uh, SUI network, I'm just going to use that one, can just read our chain or the projects can read our chain uh, and request that data from our chain and then it just posts on theirs so then they can use it directly. Uh, it's just a lot easier to manage that cross-chain uh, integration. But then because they're still using Charlie 3 tokens on our side, which is tied to Cardano, the volume still stays within the Cardano ecosystem. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you for explaining that. I'm trying to like uh, map That's it out in my, my head. That's my high level. <laughs> <laughs> you, you did really well. Like you were saying, how you, you, you're not one of the developers and you're not, nope. you can't touch on the um, technical side of things, but I think you did a brilliant job there. Yeah, so thank you. thank you for that explanation. All right. Now, the other thing that you guys are doing is verified discounts and coupon codes. Mm. Now, th this, this one's quite interesting. It's interesting, and I don't know if you mean that in a good way, and I support you on your thought process, uh, because it is, it's a weird thing. Like, why would discount coupon codes, it seems like low-hanging fruit or scammy things or whatever. And that's, that's the problem, is like, this is just the general idea of what some coupons and stuff can be, is just like, it's not actually real, it's just trying to get you into those, those sites and stuff. Um, but so we're trying to work around that because the discount and coupon situation for businesses is a multi-billion dollar industry out there for what they either they're selling access to those types of things like other um, web apps like Honey do. But the problem that we've heard from a lot of retailers, and this is also coming through Verilidity, which is our partner on this project uh, that will create the front end uh, infrastructure for it which has a lot of integration with Charlie three already with different prices and purchasing in different types of tokens and fiat and stuff. But, um, the big thing that we've heard from these retailers is that their discounts and stuff, when they get picked up by other things, they keep getting recycled even after they have, um, expired. And so it brings people to the site thinking they can buy something, but then they don't because the coupon code doesn't work anymore. So it's actually a negative uh -huh. sale. Right? And it drives people away from their brand and not wanting to go back because they had a negative experience with it. 
So what we can do by verifying these codes is having a front end where businesses can come in, put in whatever their discounts are, uh, put in the parameters, which we would have like, uh, we'll work with them and figure out exactly what kind of parameters they want. Um, like just metadata on an NFT basically. And one of those things that will be the enforceable kind of contracts to it is the expiry date. So it's active from here to here. As soon as the date hits blah, that token is that NFT is burnt and no longer usable, right? So, and it's gone. So the platform will only ever show stuff that is active uh, and usable for every platform, meaning they'll always have a positive experience uh, when they can try and use that, that discount platform. And we'll make it, I do believe it would be open source stuff. Uh, that was the idea for building it. I think it's in the open source track. So it would be open source there. And then we would probably let people use it for free to gain that adoptability to begin with, and then maybe turn on a revenue model later for businesses to say, um, like they'll pay for every update of a new uh, discount token or whatever, or every mint of every one of those tokens. So that's cool. So that comes through Cardano as ADA uh, or as Charlie three expenditure to the, to the Oracle feed. And then after that, it's the same thing. Whenever one of them closes out the, you know, burning does the same thing. So it's uh, it's a multi-billion dollar industry that we're trying to onboard that almost everybody oh, yeah. uses. I'm sure you've looked up discount codes for anything you go to. Pretty much anytime I buy anything online, I just have a quick check to see if there's a discount code so I can use it and get the, you know, a quick 10% off. And yeah. um, I, I used to uh, work for a company that did this. Uh, this is back in like 2000 and... Uh, showing my age, eight, I think it was. And they had like a, an algorithm that would actually scan the websites. Uh, it was crowdsourcing those coupon codes onto mm -hmm. the platform. And then it would use a bot to try and test those coupon codes to see if the code was still valid. Uh, it was yeah. a very interesting algorithm and used a lot of resources uh, to actually make it all happen. Uh, yeah. But it was uh, yeah. pretty cool what they did. And that's just testing to see if they're viable, right? And this, I, I would say it hasn't really progressed much now because almost every coupon code I see is not actually usable anymore. It was for months ago, you know? So yeah. it's just trying to drive more people to their sites. It's really not for the e-commerce platform. It's for the discount platform. Right, where they're trying to yep. say we have yes. all of this yes. more offering, but half of it's fake. It's like a it's like a Twitter account that has ten thousand or a hundred thousand bots on it, and it only ever gets like one or two uh, comments. <laughs> like it's the yeah, same yep, yep. same crap. You think it's great, but it's not. So all right. we're trying to mitigate that a little bit, and uh, and through validity in their um, contacts, uh, we already have businesses lined up that would use it. So it just needs to be built. Okay, brilliant. So uh, fingers crossed with that one as well. Links down below. So if anyone's interested, check that one out. I think it's a good one for adoption as well. Now, this uh, last one that we'll go through is around adoption. Again, this is around uh, the Charlie uh, Cardano Oracle's adoption. And it's a masterclass workshop around yes. it. No, understanding oracles, you know, it took me a long time to understand what an oracle was and how it's all yeah. used, but this will, would have helped me. Like, yeah, we ago. had a few chats about it along the years. Yeah. <laughs> yes, you've explained it to me. I get it now. <laughs> yeah, sweet. I'm still learning. <laughs> what, what is it? <laughs> yeah, it seems to change uh, a lot, but but yeah, this one is is neat. It's not about shilling Charlie three or anything like we've over the last few months, especially with the liquidation events on other platforms, we had the liquidation event in, in, uh, on liquid in January. And then the other one, uh, from LenFi, uh, in well, know, like two months ago now at this point, I think. Yep. And it, it's really just educating people on why the use of Oracle should be necessary to avoid stuff like that, because those platforms weren't, and this is kind of the, the risk that you take, uh, with that. And their reasons are their own, you know, you can ask them, but the biggest thing about this is just that we've seen is just a lack of understanding. It's more of a, an ignorance, not an arrogance, an ignorance on just not knowing what an Oracle does or what it actually is adding and what safety mechanism that is, uh, security. So um, we just want people to be more educated on the use case of Oracles. We're not going to shill our own solution or how it's been built. That's not the point of this. The point is just to educate on Oracle use and understanding them better. And so we would be bringing in people from Link, uh, Band, Teller, Pith, 
Chronicle, you know, all these other oracles that we know from other ecosystems to talk about their use case, why it's necessary, maybe have them each specify one thing that might be more useful on those chains or something. Uh, but but yeah, it's not, again, it's not to, uh, to shill Charlie 3. It's just a general oracle uh, understanding because we, we see these big blow ups in our ecosystem saying we don't have oracles, but we do. And ours works just fine, uh, actually better than fine. Um, and uh, it, it's just an education thing. Because as soon as I go in and tell people, oh, no, this is the facts, they go, oh, okay. But I can't do that for yeah. 50,000 people constantly. You know, I try, yeah. but it's yeah. a lot of fires. So we're just trying to educate people as much as possible on, on what oracles are, what a native oracle is, how it's different, especially how it's just different from pulling APIs. Uh, what are the security measures behind it? What does it add to things? And uh, why it should be part of your DD when you're looking into any platform that uses uh, trading or price fees and stuff. Cool. All right. Yeah. I like how you're pulling in all these other oracles from the industry, not just in Cardano, but like all these other players that have been around for years and have all this yeah. experience. They've gone through all these dramas as well. So they they know what's going on here and, um, and building these robust oracles for the whole crypto space is super important. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, again, this is another really important one, I think, for everyone. And I do get those DMs from you saying, Pete, that, that this is what's going on here. This is the situation. <laughs> and, yeah. you know, I really appreciate those um, updates. And But like you said, you can't do it for the 50,000 people that are asking questions all the time. So this yeah. education but masterclass, <laughs> <laughs> that's why yeah. I have these platforms. That's why you're yeah. on this interview. We're here to teach people what's going on and how to use these oracles and how they all work. All right. right. So that's another brilliant one links down below in the show notes and that pretty much covers everything that you guys yeah. have got out at the moment is there anything else that you'd like to leave for the community in terms of message call to actions what, what do you yeah. want to leave with them so i i said a, a little call to action earlier like i said we just um uh, launched the dow it's just through clarity dow and we have our first vote up there it's for I think you have to hold 100 C3 tokens, which is like a couple dollars at this point because of the market, um, and to be able to vote. And it's just which feeds are going up next. What is your projects that you're following need? Uh, you can come and comment. We can change it up. This is just a temp check, but we really want people to be involved with that because it helps the entire ecosystem out and, and having more security. So please go to the, the Clarity DAO and uh vote find the charlie 3 platform and, and vote on that and then the next thing is we will have our uh node sale coming up we're expanding the node network yay everybody's been asking for it for a long time um so we're expanding the node network out to probably 30 or so operators over the next uh you know two quarters here uh starting it off uh soon but yeah just stick around for that we'll have the requirements coming out uh, really soon. And we just want quality people and uh, to come in and be able to contribute more to our decentralization, uh, as well as be able to give rewards back to people and improve uh, the ecosystem a lot more. And that will also help people be educated on oracles as well, because there'll be more people using it and understanding and be able to share that message. So um, yeah, get involved for the potential upcoming node sale. <laughs> All right. Brilliant. Damon. Thank you so much for joining me on this episode. All the links, references, everything that we talked about in the show notes down below. And make sure you check out their socials to be kept up to date with everything that's happening in the Charlie 3 ecosystem. But uh, Damon, thank you for joining me and taking me through everything that you guys are doing. Absolutely. Thanks a lot for having me, Pete. And uh, good day to every one of you. <laughs>